Hello again. Today's little project, I'm going to use this piece of 6 by 8 and a half inch MDF. I want to transfer this rose onto it, like so. Cut all the black bits out with a fret saw, scroll saw, and then put resin inside each one. Nice red there, some leafage, and we'll uh, see if it gets like a stained glass effect. Okay, so first of all, cover your MDF with a good old painter's tape. That's just going to make it easier for pulling off the template stencil once we're finished. Get yourself some nice spray, just spray that on there. Get that in shape and stick it down. What I have done there, if you notice, I've gone around with a pencil because I want to cut out the actual shape of this at the end. So I'll stick this on here and without any messing we'll go down to the workshop and start cutting this out. Right that's stuck on there nicely now as you can see. The next stage is to drill pilot holes into each section, each black section, so we're going to have to feed the blade through. I'm going to go for the pinless blade today because it's quite thin. The smallest sections could be the little pieces here. And I notice it's quite a small piece here to come out. So I'll drill these holes. This allows you to feed the blade through and we'll start cutting these out. Okay, as you can see, that's all done now. It's just enough to get the blade through. So we'll get this set up on the saw now. We'll start cutting this one out. You might just want to smooth them but off a bit of paper, a bit of sandpaper. But yeah, that's ready to go now, so let's start cutting this out. I'll cut this one section out and then uh, I'll complete it. But it's the same stuff all the way through. Off we go. Okay, as you can see, we've got one section cut out. It's a bit awkward actually trying to do it and trying to keep my hand away out of the way at the same time. But you get the general idea. So I'll continue with this, complete it all, and then we'll come back at the end when we start peeling the paper off. Right, that's all cut out nicely. All we've got to do now is basically go right round the whole lot. So we'll cut that out next. And then we're onto a bit of paint, and then we'll get onto the resin side of things.
Okay, that's all cut out nicely now. Quite a delicate piece, but I think once the resin's set in, it should be a, a lot firmer. It's quite easy stuff to cut with this MDF, so there's not a lot of effort involved. So yeah, I'll peel this paper off. We'll put a bit of black paint on. Uh, you can leave it the wood effect if you want to do, but I prefer the black. And then we'll start mixing some resin up. That'll do for now. Right, that's all peeled off nicely. We took all the paper off front and back. I've given it a slight little sanding. You don't need a lot because this MDF just cut really nice. Now the last time I made something very similar, I just put a brown stain on this. So I'm going to take a chance today and paint it black. Just going to cover the whole lot in black, just so it stands out a bit better. Just my standard satin black. And basically all we're going to do is throw this on. And hopefully it should look okay when it's dry. I might regret doing this, but I'm going to go with it. So I will literally just throw this all on here, cover the whole lot in black, get inside all those bits here, and then we'll see what it's like when it dries. So I'll get this completed. Right, that's nicely dry. It's not come out too bad. I'm happy with that. Now we're going to start pouring the resin in. If you haven't got resin, go to any craft store. I'm sure you can buy coloured plastic and just stick it to the back of that. Give you the same effect. Coloured red, coloured green and so on. Because I have the resin to use and I like to make things difficult for myself. We're going to use the resin today. Before we start pouring it in here, obviously we need to stop it from running away anyway. In the past when I did a butterfly, I tried some of this transparent book covering and basically just covered the back of it like so now there was bits of leakage through so I'm not 100% happy with that one so for today I'm just going to use some lard sellotape and stick that to the back to make a backing afterwards you can cut around it I've actually peeled the tape off afterwards it's a bit sticky but if you just give a nice coat and a resin on afterwards, it just makes it nice and clear. So I'll cover the back with this, with a sellotape. But before that, I'll just show you what kind of resin we're going to be using. It's amazing clear cast, A and B. I love this stuff. And the good thing about it, you just mix it 50-50 by volume. So if you've got half an inch in one cup, you want half an inch in another. So half an inch of resin, half an inch of Ardner, mix the two together. Follow the instructions on the package as always. And then just drop yourself a bit of colorant in. I'm obviously gonna want red for the rose and green for the leaves. Now I haven't got any brown, so I'm gonna mix two colors together and hopefully that should work. So I get all this all set up and then we'll come back when we start doing the pouring. Right, we've got that all lined. Also what I like to do is get a flat board to put it on. Because ideally I'm going to use some pegs just to keep this pressed down afterwards. But I don't know if you can see there. I've actually lined it with the sellotape. So that's good, that'll be pressed on there afterwards. So we're, we're ready for the resin now. Pure guesswork with what amount I'm needing. So I've mixed this little one, the red first. Thing with your colorant, can't make it too thick. You're not gonna see your light through it. And you don't want it too lacking of color cause it'll just look more like a pinky, too clear if you basically what I'm trying to see. I like to use these little spoons because I've got like little shapes at the end. And all we're going to do, and that makes like a little spoon for you. 
So what we're going to do now is start filling these in like so. If you want to, you can pour it straight in. I'm just trying to keep my head out of the way of this camera. So I'll do mine this way. Try and get it as, to the level as you can, because when it's when it sets, to shrink down slightly a little bit, and you will have a little dip in it. So you can more or less see what I'm doing here. So I'll continue and fit all these in, like so, and we'll come back when it's done. Right, we've got all the red in. It was looking well, it had potential. However, just in this corner here, we had a little bit of a leakage. I was open to do it all in one day as regards to the leaves, the petals, and the little twiggy thing at the same time. But however, I've had to leave it. But it's set nice, it looks the part. You can just see that one bit there. So it's not the end of the world. All I do now is I'll cut that piece out with this and then we'll continue with the green and if I have no leakages we'll do the stem at the same time. So I'll cut this out now. I've already got the green ready to go. Same mix, 50-50. Mix together resin and adner. Drop a bit of green in and we'll start filling these up. So I'll remove this little section here first and then we'll pop the green in. Right, I've removed that bit there as you can see. Basically just cut it out with a knife. Put my tape back on the back and we're good to go again. I'm not too concerned if I have a bit of leakage on the leaves because it would just be one leaf into the other. So that shouldn't matter. So we're ready to apply the green now. Mixed exactly the same way. Like I said before, I like these plastic knives, spoons, forks to give that little hook in the bottom to scoop it up with so it looks a bit like this green to be honest but i'm going to take a chance see what it's like once it's set so we basically just start filling these up like before What I do is get a cocktail stick and you can help it feed it along if you find it's just going in a bit too slow. Stuff like that where you've just dripped it onto the black. I just get a bit of tissue, roll it into a little spiral shape and uh, just remove that. No big panic. So same as before, and I'll start filling this in and then come back when it's done, hopefully we've got no leakage. Right, that's this project finished now. We've done the green, we've done the red, I've done the brown of the stem. You can order brown, but being impatient, I went and mixed the red with the green and I just look brown from there. But when we get it in the window, it's more of a slight purpley colour. But I'm not personally that bothered. I've removed all the sellotape from the back. That's gone nicely. These little bits. Next time, I think I might just get myself some clear plastic and put a thin layer of resin on and just stick that to it and just leave that permanently on the back. Got myself a little rubber screen sticker thing to hang this up in the window. Because at the end of the day, it is meant to be a stained glass effect. Downside for doing these resins for the window is the UV light from the sunshine. I don't know how long these will last. and I think personally it will fade over a period of time. But that doesn't affect us too much in the UK as we don't get too much sunshine. But, uh, just be careful where you're going to put it. If not, I think that would be nice on a wooden plaque 
with a frame around it exactly the same effect entirely up to you guys so yeah stained glass rose with resin I'll pop it in the window now and we'll see what we've uh, achieved thank you for watching if you're still with me well done till next time